I'm Jay Rayner and this is my new book, My Last Supper. It's an attempt to answer the one question I've been asked most often, which is, if you were on death row, what would your last meal be? And I always said, well, I, I think I'd have lost my appetite. And I got to think about all the people who are eligible for last meals. It's not a happy bunch, suicidal, terminally ill. They're not actually suited to eating a big blowout. What you're really being asked is, if there were no consequences, if you didn't have to worry about how you felt the next day, what would you have? And that struck me as a brilliant question. So in this book, I go out in search of the ingredients for my last supper, and I tell the stories behind them, because I think food and memory are like that. They're intertwined. And at the end, I do throw the party to end all parties, though I'm still here the next day. To find out what was actually on the table, you'll have to buy it. My Last Supper, out now. I'm in Waterston's Piccadilly, and I want to share with you three books that have always been important to me, and happily one of them is right here, the Ian Banks section. I loved Ian Banks. I was furious at him for dying um, because I wanted to read more of him. He was a brilliant sci-fi writer, but it was his conventional fiction, I think it's a terrible word, but it will do, which really grabbed me. Um, and this one, The Crow Road, it's a beautiful family saga, really. It's a long, drawn-out river of a novel about a family and about the landscape of Scotland, uh, intertwined with memories, and it's just beautifully, beautifully told. The, the key to a good book, I think, is that you don't want it to end, and I didn't want The Crow Road to end. I reread it uh, often, and it still delights me. It's a fabulous novel. The Crow Road, Ian Banks. After I read my next choice, I went and knocked on the door of a neighbour who had given it to me and said, why wasn't I told there is a book about Jewish boys and masturbation? Given that I was a Jewish boy, I am a Jewish boy. Uh, Philip Roth's Portnoy's Complaint. Uh, it caused a storm when it came out. Norman Mailer said of this book he'd uh, like to congratulate the author, but he wouldn't want to shake his hand. Um, it is uh, about a, a character who is somewhat obsessed with his masturbatory habits. It's a family saga from Jewish New York. It's hilariously funny. At times, I think Roth himself thought it was a bit too vaudevillian for the rest of his canon. But I adore this book, um, and it just makes me laugh. And I quote bits of it in reviews whenever I can, because I think it makes me look almost as clever as he does. But, he, but I'm not. Um, it is a romp of a read. If you've ever thought Philip Roth might be an austere author, read Portnoy's Complaint. Uh, you will thank me, and then you'll thank Philip Roth. So my last choice is Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Um, you may well know Nora Ephron's work because she was the writer of When Harry Met Sally, the writer, director of You've Got Mail and various other films. This novel, it's a very small novel, um, is a very foodie novel as well. It's essentially the novelised version of the collapse of her marriage, um, I think back in the 70s. Uh, it's hilariously funny, but it comes with recipes as well. Um, and it, it speaks to me because the recipes aren't there to tell you how to have a perfect life. They're to tell you how to get through heartbreak and the fury of a marriage that is collapsing. It's very, very funny. It's beautifully discursive. It's like she's sitting there next to you telling you the story. Nora Ephron's Heartburn. I heartily recommend it.